I'm, I'm here because a number of years ago, my son was at lunch with us. With, my husband and I had taken him to lunch, my little boy, Spencer. And we noticed that he was coughing repeatedly, a lot. I mean, just unendingly. And, and so we took him home, and I did what most mothers would do. I gave him a little cough medicine, and I told him to lie down. And I realized very quickly that his heart was racing out of his shirt. Well, 25 minutes later or so, the heart was still racing, and I got really scared. So I said to my husband, you know what? I'm not waiting anymore. We're going to the emergency room. We were escorted immediately to a room where he was put on oxygen, and they started the IV drip of the steroids. We spent the next two nights in the ICU. You can imagine my husband and I were very scared. Um, we started to ask each other a lot of questions. How did this happen? Why us? They were calling it respiratory airways disease, which basically is just the precursor to asthma. They sort of don't want to call it asthma right out front. And I see all of you nodding your heads because I know that what I'm going to hear is that you've all been through the exact same thing and you know how truly frightening it is. My oldest son, who is four, is suffering from severe allergies and we had to have his tonsils and adenoids removed last year. He had one of those terrible coughs that Sloan was talking about with her son. My daughter, who's um, three years old, she's been sick for the last five weeks. She's had this horrible cough. Last night, she was up, and I was up for about three hours because she kept coughing. And I've given her tons of different medicines. It's not going away. I had an incident just this past week. We were visiting with my mother in Texas, and my son, my youngest son, every night he was having these coughing spells, coughing, coughing, and then one night he just had a, an all blown out asthma attack. I have a five-year-old daughter and she has asthma and no one in my family has a history of asthma, no one in her father's family has a history of asthma. I started to ask the doctors a lot of questions. They said, well, why are you surprised? Asthma is the number one reason that kids come to the emergency room at New York Hospital. Wow, that surprised me. So then I started to ask my parents and my in-laws. Turns out that four generations back on both sides of the families, nobody had ever had any pulmonology issue whatsoever. No food allergy, no asthma, nothing. So well then why, why now, why this adore, he's really cute, you gotta meet him. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, why him, right? And we realized that there's genetics, or there's environmental, it's one or the other. And clearly it wasn't genetic, so it had to be environmental. So we started to do our research, right? And that's what mothers do. When we don't know how to deal with things, we start to look for answers. And we found out some pretty scary things, which I don't know if all of you know. How about the fact that one out of every 13 school-aged children in America has asthma? That's a big number. Then I found out that um, asthma rates in kids under five have risen 160% between the years of 1980 and 1994. Uh, that, that's pretty big too. And I started to learn through doing a lot of reading that there was this direct correlation between the toxins found in our common household cleaners and the rates of asthma and allergies. I started to think about how I was gonna spread this message because it's a message about our homes, it's a message about asthma, it's a message about those little lungs and those little people, and it's also a message about the planet. And I wanted a way to get moms together to talk about it because I think really we are the, the change makers, so to speak. We're the ones who can really make a difference. And I had this thought that if we all got together that not only could you all hear the message, but then maybe you could help me to spread the message. And so I asked Cindy to come, my goddess, and talk to us about what's really going on in our homes and give you kind of the inside skinny on what's happening and what we can do to make a difference. Well, oh, thanks, Cindy. Sloan. This is such an important topic. You know, women are the caretakers of the home, and we want to make sure that our homes are the safest place in the world. Now, so I'm going to share the real dirt on cleaning. So to start out, 90% of all poison exposures occur in the home. And just last year, there were 200,000 poisonings that happened from household cleaners. And all of us know that we should keep these products out of the reach of children, use the safety latches, and make sure they're tucked away. But the thing that people don't realize is that all this cumulative products that you use in your home can actually create real health con consequences. And that's a dirty little secret that people don't know about that I'd like to talk about. Now, 90% of our time is spent inside. And if you go to the Environmental Protection Agency website, you'll find that indoor air pollution is two to five times higher inside than it is outside. So you have to ask yourself the question, where are these pollutants coming from? Well, they're coming from our carpeting, they're coming from upholstery, they're coming from the air fresheners you spray in the air, and what you clean your home with. 
So this cumulative toxic effect is, is enormous. And if you're thinking about the number of chemicals that have been introduced, in the last several decades, 80,000 new chemicals have been introduced today, and they've been registered with the EPA, but very, very, very few of them have been tested for toxicity. And what that means is that you and I and our families are part of the biggest chemistry experiment ever conducted, and we're all the guinea pigs, because nobody knows what the, the cumulative effects of all of these chemicals are to our health. And if you go to the Environmental Protection Agency website and you try to look up hazardous household waste, I'm going to show you what they considered ha hazardous <coughs> household waste. And they say that the disposal of the following products can be environmental toxins and harmful to human health. So are you kind of curious what those might be? Let me show you. Well, they include harmful to human health, bleach, harmful to human health, toilet bowl cleaner, oven cleaner. Obviously, for, for legal reasons, we can't uh, <laughs> reveal the names, but I think you might recognize Tub a few and tile of cleaner and drain cleaner. So these are all environmental toxins and considered harmful to human health. And you have to ask yourself the question, you know, if our governmental authorities know that these are harmful, are these really things that we want to have in our homes today? Now, I'd also like to share with you a number of other types of chemicals that are being used in products that we may be using all of the time that have harmful health consequences, too. And I'm going to start with an ingredient that's called sodium hydroxide. Now, sodium hydroxide as a chemical is known as an immediate respiratory irritant. So immediately upon inhalation, it can cause respiratory uh, problems. It can cause damage to your mouth, your eyes, your skin, and your throat. And in some cases, it could cause kidney and liver damage. So we're going to clear these off, and I want to show you kind of an array of products that contain <laughs> this particular ingredient. And they include things like tub and tile cleaner, once again, toilet bowl cleaner, oven cleaner. So these are getting familiar, aren't they? They can also be found in dishwashing liquids and can be found in some types mm. of laundry detergents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they can be found in scouring cleansers and also some types of pre-spotters. Now, I want you to think about the ways you use these types of products. You'll notice a lot of them have spray triggers so that you're spraying them in the air. And these are things that there's a high probability that you're potentially inhaling or your family may be inhaling. And again, this particular ingredient, sodium hydroxide, is known to be immediately irritating to your respiratory system. So this is a whole array of products that is something you want to think about, too. Now, another ingredient that's often found in uh, household products is called hydrochloric acid. And you probably heard about this in you know, high school chemistry, very, very powerful and dangerous ingredient that's often found in toilet bowl cleaners and also in um, fabric air odor eliminators. Now, hydrochloric acid will cause severe damage to your skin. It's fatal if it's ingested, and it can also cause uh, severe problems if inhaled. And if you read the warning labels of these products, they say, you know, be very, very careful. Make sure your room is ventilated. But think of the way you use a toilet bowl cleaner. You're in a, in a bathroom. You're working away. It's sealed up. And typically, we don't hold our breaths when we're cleaning our home. That's not the typical way we do it. And this is or a wear product. A gas mask or we that, wear a gas case. mask. So there's a big question you want to ask yourself. If these things are not designed for us to breathe, why are we using them in our home? So that's another one. Now, another ingredient that's found actually in a lot of these products, too, is something called butyl cellosolve. And you'll also find it in all-purpose cleaners and window cleaners, too. Butyl cellosol is also known as a respiratory irritant, and it's something that uh, there actually was a study that was done by the California Air Resources Board that showed that women who spend 15 minutes cleaning the soap scum off of their shower in inhale three times the acute limit for this particular chemical. So um, it, there's so many, many products that are using these types of chemicals in your home, and they're, they're things that you probably want to be getting out of your home. So the good news about all of this, and there is good yeah, news. Yeah, could you give us something good? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a bit overwhelming, is that you can do something about this. 
you can do something about it by getting educated. And we've given you a resource that's on your chair. There's a great resource available from the National Institutes of Health, and it's called the Household Products Directory. And what you can do is you can look up these ingredients on that database, and you'll find out the brands that have those ingredients present in them. So you want to find out what's in your home. You want to find out what's around your family and your kids, and make the decision about whether or not you want to get them out of your homes. What was real, probably most interesting was the statistics to back up what we probably know as it relates to how harmful some of these cleaning products are. There have been times in my life when I have had that experience where you're in the bathroom and you're spraying all the stuff and you have to, you get overwhelmed by the smell and you have to get out of the room. The thing that surprised me the most today was the fact that I never really thought about all the toxic fumes that our household cleaners can put into the air and cumulatively having all of that toxic floating through our home could be very harmful to my children. Another choice that you have is to look for safe alternatives that are out there. Now my company is Shackley Corporation and Shackley's been in business for 50 years and our product philosophy is develop products that improve the health of people and they improve the health of the planet at the same time. And one of our original products was a product we call Basic H, which was one of the very first biodegradable non-toxic cleaners that was introduced. And Basic H has been used by Jacques Cousteau in the Calypso. It's been in the Biosphere 2 project. It was selected as an official Earth Day product. It's been used by any number of environmental organizations because it's safe for you and it's safe for the planet at the same time. So about nine months ago, we started this project to completely, and a lot of it was through Sloan's help too, to completely revamp our household life. Leave? I think the demons need to leave. Yes, let's just move them aside. And so we wanted to revamp our entire line and put it under the name Get Clean because we wanted to make sure that any product that carried that brand name was safe for you, safe for your home, and safe for the planet at the same time. So I'd like to share with you one of our amazing products, which is the great grandchild of Basic H, which is Get Clean's Basic H Squared. Now this is a little unusual. You know, we're used to using ready-to-use products. This is a super duper concentrate. It's non-toxic and natural formula. It's made from corn and coconut surfactants. Those are the cleaning agents in this particular product. And it's incredibly, incredibly concentrated. You can use this for literally thousands of uses in your home. It can be used on any washable surface. It's great at getting, cutting grease and getting rid of dirt. You can use it on your floors, your, your walls, your car. You can use it to clean husband. windows. <laughs> well, <laughs> all over the place. But because it's a concentrate, it's a little hard for people to understand how to use it. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make. And I'm actually going to have Sloan make some up. We're going to start with an all-purpose cleaner. And all she's going to do is add a quarter of a teaspoon of our basic H squared formula. And she's going to make an all-purpose cleaner. And Cindy, tell us why the concentrate is so important. You know, Earth Day is coming up, and everybody talks about what they can do for the planet. So while, you know, obviously, uh, asthma and health related issues are, are of key importance. Also, we all kind of want to know what we can do to be green. It's not just about being able to buy a Prius. Not everybody can do that. And, you know, a lot of people want to know, well, what can we do on an individual basis? And I think this is an extraordinary way to put your foot in the right direction on being green. And why don't you tell us Absolutely. what that really means? So when you're making a concentrate, you, make, you use less water to make it. You use less energy to create it. There's less weight to ship as opposed to all the products, and I'll tell you how many products this kind of this bottle will make in just a second. It, you have less packaging waste. You actually generate less greenhouse gas emissions because you're only shipping one bottle as opposed to thousands of other bottles. So cumulatively, it makes an enormous difference. And this is a biodegradable formula, so it's very, very good for the planet at the same time. So what Sloan just made with this all-purpose cleaner is a cleaner that's non-toxic and natural. It's no harmful fumes. It's going to clean all sorts of stuff. And this bottle, if I converted the entire bottle to make ready-to-use all-purpose cleaner, make over 200 bottles of all-purpose cleaner. But the cool thing about this is I can use it for all sorts of stuff. So we're going to make a window cleaner next. And this window cleaner, to make it, Sloan's only going to add two drops to 16 ounces of water. And those two drops are going to make a window cleaner that has performance that's equivalent to Windex. And if I converted this entire bottle to make window cleaner, 
it would make over 5,000 ready-to-use bottles. So getting back to the whole subject of concentrates, you know, when you're making one product as opposed to 5,000 other products, it's much, much better for the planet all the way around. Less water, less energy, less shipping costs, and all sorts of reasons. So our company feels very, very strongly about using concentrates wherever possible because we want to leave a light footprint on the earth, and that's a big deal. I don't think you necessarily really think about, okay, I'm using all these cleaning products. Well, how many, how much plastic did it take to create this? And where is it going? The idea of using a concentrated product and not having to continue to dump all the containers um, was a very obvious um, way that I could help the environment. But what I didn't know and didn't think about was also the, um, the emissions from the transportation of those products to the shelves and you know everything else, sort of the trickle-down effect. I think it was a really great comment talking about the concentrate, buying things in concentrate, and and the impact that that has on on not trans using all this transportation to get and bottling and and packaging to get things to you. So I'm inspired by actually going for more concentrate. If everybody did it, you know, think of how huge that would be. Well, what I'd like to do is give you a demonstration of one of the most difficult things to clean in a home and that's soap scum. And people want really powerful, powerful products to do that. So I'm gonna do a quick demonstration. And we're gonna take the leading brand, and we actually created soap scum. Here you go. <laughs> so this is gonna be our challenge we're gonna take on. And I'm gonna have Sloan use the leading brand, and I'm gonna use our Scour Off, which is a natural, non-toxic cleaning product. Now, to do this, before we get started, I'd like to have Sloan read this label. And I'm going to have her read a couple of things on the label. And, you know, I think sometimes we ignore reading product labels. You want to read them and listen very carefully. Pay attention to what's on there because these are warnings and requirements that are governed, that, that are dictated. So here we go. Warning. For sensitive skin or prolonged use, wear gloves. Okay, so here are your gloves. Oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> and if person isn't breathing, call 911 or an ambulance. Then give artificial respiration, preferably mouth to mouth if possible. So you probably I'm not giving you, mouth to you mouth. need protective gear here if we're going to use this one. All right. So we're going to use create the this out of the way. Okay. So this product, I'm actually going to use my hands because it's, there's nothing, there's no harmful effect whatsoever. And we have to make sure that Sloan puts all the protective gear on, for sure. How come I get this side of the demonstration? Yeah, I, I, I'm just going to mix a little bit up on my hands. I know this is how you clean your house. All right. Okay, go ahead and spray yours and just keep it away from me. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just add a little water. And you can use sponges for this, but I just want to demonstrate this is very, very safe. So at the same time, let's wipe together. Okay. There we go. Okay. So the, the point of this is that there are natural, non-toxic choices out there that you can use that will get the job done, and you really want to make sure you've got the performance on the product. And again, when you look at the difference of what these labels are, and I'm going to actually just pass this around since cameras can't see, so you can read what this label says, and just compare these products, because it's just something that information is a wonderful thing. Women are so fabulous, because when we get information about a problem, we can mobilize and tell others about it. And this is such an important thing to tell your, your friends about, your family members about, because honestly, people just don't know about this subject. And this is information that people need to be aware of. Just reading the back of that bottle, it says dial 911 and administer this, you know, this and administer that. And I, I have in my house right now. And oh my goodness, this is the first thing that's going in the trash. I just did not know that type of issue scripting was written on a bottle that's in my house.
I guess what I look for most is performance. You know, I, I definitely wanted to clean on the first try and not have to put too, too much effort into cleaning the surfaces that I'm trying to clean. Uh, but, you know, I think also it is important to us that it be healthy for us and not harm us in any way. So one of the other things that we did is we wanted to make sure that we had all the performance proof on our products. So we actually did third-party performance testing on our products against a number of leading brands. And we did it with an independent laboratory just to make sure that you could know that these products perform. And I want to talk about our dishwashing liquid because grease cutting is really the, the, the gold standard. If your dishwashing liquid doesn't cut grease, people don't really like to use it. So if your products don't perform, people don't want to buy them. So against Palmolive, we were 17% more effective at cutting grease. And against Method, we were 72% more effective at cutting grease. And I'll just pull some of the environmental against eCover, we're 85% more effective at cutting grease. And seventh generation, we were 98% more effective at cutting grease. And then the Whole Foods 365 brand, we were also 85% more effective. So anyway, I think that these are products that really, really work. Now the acid test in performance is laundry. Because honestly, no one wears, wants to wear gray clothes, you know. Thanks. Unless they're sw beautiful sweaters. Like they're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> so laundry is a big deal. You want to make sure that your whites are white and your colors are bright and everything else. So what we did with our fresh laundry concentrate, this product, this actually will clean 32 loads of laundry, which is pretty amazing. Again, it's a very, very tight concentration. It's using corn and coconut surfactants, just like we're using in a lot of our other products. And we actually, this is a two-in-one product that actually um, can be used as a pre-spotter and outperforms shout and spray and wash as used as a pre-spotter. And it also is 30% more effective than all small and mighty in cutting dirt and debris. So this is a high-performance product, and it's a great natural choice to use, and people really love this product when they use it. And then it, also in the laundry room, what we wanted to do is make sure that we had choices that people would have. This bottle will actually soften about 64 loads of laundry. And in terms of performance, it's equivalent to downy in reducing static cling. So it will give you the performance, and it's super, super concentrated. So that's another great choice. Then we have, for people that like to use dryer sheets, which is really popular, we've got our Get Clean uh, dryer sheets that we have. And these rival the performance of bounce at cutting static cling. So what's really cool about these dryer sheets, they're vegetable based, they're recyclable materials, they're biodegradable, there's no fragrance whatsoever. So you get all the performance at cutting static cling and also very, very good choice for the planet. And we put it all together, everything, in one really handy dandy kit. Uh, and if that's okay, I'd love to get a chance to tell you about that one. Well, we really wanted you all to have an easy way, right? It's just too complicated to worry about 50 different items and what does which part of your house. And so we've put it all together. I think Cindy's done a great job in a very easy way to change basically all of the cleaning products in your house. And what I'd like to ask you as a as a, what I consider myself a caretaker of this planet is to go home and take a really big black garbage bag and go around your house and take all your friends and put them all in the garbage bag and kiss them goodbye and take a step in the right direction for our planet, which is really the only true thing we have to leave to our children and obviously for their health and for asthma and allergy concerns. And so Cindy's gonna tell us about what's in the kit. Yeah. And so, also I want you to talk about cost savings. Okay, absolutely. So because our company believes in concentrates, our products are really, really, really concentrated. So we, we wanted to put together a starter kit that would allow people to get everything out of their homes and have stuff for their kitchen all, all throughout their house and things that they can use in their laundry. So what we did is we did some calculations on, on the use of concentrates, the amount of cleaning performance we get. You're replacing about $3,400 worth of cleaners when you buy our starter kit. And we have direct kind of line by line comparisons of all that. The really incredible thing about this kit, again, because we're using concentrates and we're replacing so many ready to use products people use in their homes, each kit that somebody buys actually will eliminate 108 pounds of packaging waste from landfills. 
and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 248 pounds. And we went to an environmental engineering firm and had all these calculations done. So getting this kit is like planting 10 trees. When I saw that the green product worked as well as the mass marketed product, that was my aha moment. I said, well, you know, maybe I need to go back and revisit this. There are products that I could use um, that would be effective. And hearing that will save money, that'll make my husband, the banker, very happy. <laughs> I think most people think right now, when they think about how are we going to help the environment, they think buy a Prius and change your light bulb. I don't think people are necessarily thinking through change your cleaning products. And so that's a really great message that I think in certain ways might be a little bit more practical for people. I know that we've got a big, a big problem ahead of us unless we all start taking personal responsibility. And especially having kids, you see it, that um, it starts with us as leading the example. So the starter kit um, has all of these products with it, plus it's got this caddy and all of your measuring tools. It's got the spray bottles all ready for you so to, to try to make this really, really simple. And so what this product is, is this, this is the pre-spotter. You can also use it in your laundry. This is the basic H squared. These are our wipes. This is the scour off that I was using as an alternative to the um, for your shower. You can sample right Our on dishwashing these, liquid. Have it all over me. This automatic dishwashing concentrate is also very, very concentrated. Great performance. And it's also phosphate free. It's one of the very, we actually have a patent on it. It's one of the very few phosphate free laundry uh, automatic dishwashing detergents. So we also have our laundry products. So you get the, the fabric softener, the dryer sheets, and the laundry. And then again, you get these great. You can, you're going to be able to machine wash these are microfiber sponges and cleaning cloths. This is great for windows, it's all purpose. But you'll be able to wash them about 400 times. So they're really great. They last forever. So, so you can buy it all individually, but I just think it's so easy if you're really going to make a change in your life to do it at one time. We hope that you'll give it to your friends as presents, to your families, to your mothers, to your sisters, and that really what I hope is that you'll help spread the word to other women, to other mothers about all the things that we're doing wrong and the planet that we're leaving to our children, which is something really that at this point we have no reason to be proud of. And I thank you really for coming and um, for, for what I hope you'll do and tell to the rest of Atlanta. So thank you, ladies. Thank you.